Compute is one of the foundation services of AWS. In fact, I was attending one of the trainings at AWS, and they told us that 73% of total revenue of AWS is through EC2. That's a server in the cloud, a compute in the cloud. So let's look at four offerings among many that Compute gives us. So the first one is LightSail. And there are people who love to build their servers, have their databases put on the firewall settings, and then install a lot of things. But then, on the other hand, there are people who simply want something out of the box, and they don't want to provision a server to do everything on end. And they want it for a monthly small price. For all those use cases, we have something called LightSail, which is one of the newest services launched by AWS, and the plan starts at about $5 a month. And it involves the VM, the storage, the data transfer, you can access search it from the console, and you can have a static IP or DNS management right from the console, and you don't need to worry about it. We'll take a look at it in our demo section. Then we have EC2. So this is where you install any application that you would want. This is essentially the compute in the cloud where they have virtualized your services, and then you can access it anywhere from the world using the internet. They have multiple pricing options, on demand, on reserve, on the spot. So if you have your workload, which you know is going to run for a very long time, one year, two years, three years, you can go ahead, pay up front, reserve that thing, and get 75% off. They have something called spot option, where all of the unused capacity that AWS has for compute, they put it on auction. And then you can put your price over there, and then you can probably get close to 90% off. And then it is used for large workloads with huge, huge, huge capacity. If you want to run microservices, you know that is a native support for Docker in the cloud then ECS is the service that does that. You don't have to install it. You can operate and scale your own cluster in the cloud, and it's all a managed service open to you. Now, let's say you are focused only on writing code. You are a developer or you want your team to focus only on writing code. You do not want to worry about the infrastructure part of your application, then AWS Lambda is the service that is the function as a service. So you don't have to worry about the infrastructure at all. AWS simply tells you that you give me the code, you tell me how much memory you are going to need, and all I'm going to bill you for is the time your function is going to take to run in the cloud, and I think it's an amazing thing. If you've heard about the term serverless, this is what serverless is. So we are going to take a look at the demo of this service as well. So let's go back to console and see if we can take a look at EC2. So here I am on the EC2 console. And if you see here, this is my region. And I am in US East, not in Virginia region. Now we are at EC2 dashboard. And let's look at how we can launch an instance. Now, before we start, Let's take a look at the regions. So I am in US East Northern Virginian region, and these are all the regions that you can choose from. And this is where I'm going to launch my EC2 instance. The first thing that I'm going to do when I'm going to launch my instance on the server in cloud is choose an image, which is known as Amazon Machine Image, AMI. And this is nothing but the software package. So I'll go ahead and I'll choose the default option that I get over here. And you can see that it has the command line tools, Python, Ruby, Perl, Java, Docker, PHP, MySQL. So you could have anything that you want. And then I'll go ahead and I'll select this. Once I have selected this, I'm going to choose my instance type on hardware. And you can see that right now I have a T2.micro, which simply is three tier eligible. And the network performance is kind of low to moderate. But if I scroll down, 
you can see the network performance and everything else goes way up. And then I can go and have a different purpose, compute, memory, FPGA, the graphics, anything that I want. And this is the variety of services you get with AWS. Next step is to configure my install details so I could have one or more instances. This is my networking. So essentially, where do I want to put it? Do I want to put it in my network or the VPC that I have created? Or do you want it in another VPC? A VPC is nothing but your isolated cloud, your network inside the cloud. Apart from that, I can put something called advanced details which is nothing but boot up JavaScript. So if you want something to run when your EC2 instance is provisioned, when it starts, this is where you are going to put that. So for the purpose of the demo, I'll keep it where it is and move on to the next step, which is storage. So essentially your hard drive. The root volume is nothing. It is the hard drive where your OS is installed. And then I can add any more hard drives that I want and then I can change the size of it. If I want it to be encrypted, I can do that as well. So let's keep it simple and move to the next step, which is tags. Now, tags are used for identification purposes. Let's say you have many teams. There's a Java team, a Darknet team, and you want to keep track of who is using all the resources. So this is where you can add tags that say name equals Darknet team. And this is how you are going to identify who has launched this thing. Next up, we have security groups. These are instance level firewalls. So firewalls for your server. So typically, if you want to allow an SSH, if you want to allow an HTTP, uh, HTTPS access, this is where you are going to go to add the firewall rules. And you can put the source as anywhere, which means anyone from the internet can access this thing. Now, I do not want SSH access for everybody, so I just keep it HTTP and HTTPS. The SSH access will be essentially for my people that I want, and that's about it. I go and I'll say review and launch, and we can review all of the settings that we have here over here, and we will simply launch. And now it's going to ask for my keypad. This is now something that is required of me to SSH into this particular instance. And I'll simply say that, yes, I have access to this thing and it will launch the instance. That's about it. It's as simple as that to launch your EC2 instance in cloud. And if I come on the dashboard, uh, I can see that my instance is being provisioned and I have all the information I need over here. Then if I want more information, I can click over here and I can get all of the information that I want over here. Moreover, I have these status checks. So there are two types of status checks that check the health of the instance. So it will make sure that everything, all of the AWS resources that are required to keep this resource up and running are running fine. And it will also see if I have something that is not required in my instance. It is also there to make it up and running. Now that our instance is up and running, I can click on it and I can connect using the console. So I don't have to use a command prompt. I can click on the console itself and I can do whatever I want. On the other hand, if I take the IP address and if I go here, there it is. Out of the box, I see my WordPress site up and running. I don't have to do anything. It is right there for me to use and I can just customize it any which way that I want. Let's see if I can have the SSH window open here and I can just use the login credentials that I have. There it is. I can simply log into this and start playing around with it. I can also see all the metrics. I can see the networking. I can take a snapshot. I can do pretty much whatever I want. This is something that if you have your own virtual private server in the cloud with all the resources that you need, you can run your small applications on it. You can run your WordPress site on it. You can do so many things. 
There are so many use cases that you can use LightSail for. It is one of the most popular compute services that was recently launched. Let's look at Lambda. So we come to compute and then we click on Lambda. This essentially functions as a service. You can see that I already have something that is already there. So let's create a Lambda function. We'll take something that is provided out of the box for us. You just click on this and then we click on an SNS message. So this is like the messaging service of AWS, simple notification services. And we can enable trigger. The SNS topic is incident response, and let's click on it. Now you can see I can type my function name. So I'll simply say my Lambda function. And the language that I'm choosing, Edge Node JS. I can also have C Sharp, Java, Python, etc. And this is my simple code. And then I have environment variables I can use. I will create a new role and then I will name my new role, my Lambda SNS role. I'll keep everything as it is and that I would simply say, go next. Then I'll create a function. Now, this function would be using some memory, and this function will take some amount of time to execute. That amount of time is what AWS is going to charge me for. I do not get charged for anything else. So here, my Lambda function is ready, and if I click on test, then I can simply say, There it is, SNS. Say and test. And it should give me something that says hello from SNS. Let's look at this function, at the detail that we got. If you see here, that is the duration. So it ran for 2.84 milliseconds. And then the billing duration or the bill duration is 100 milliseconds. The resources configure. So I said that I needed 128 MB of RAM to run this thing. And the maximum memory that I actually used, that this function actually used, was 90 megabytes. So that is all I need to do. I need to upload my code and then I need to say how much memory I'm going to use and it can be up to 512 MB. There's only one more limitation that says that our function should not run for more than five minutes. Essentially, a microservice would not necessarily run for five minutes. If it's running for more than five minutes, then it's probably the best idea to break it down into several more functions. We get billed by milliseconds, and the best part is in the first year, you get something like 1 billion milliseconds available in the first year. Go and test this thing. This is one of the most interesting things that you will find. As a developer, as an organization, you want your people to focus on the code. You know how easily you can push your code to production to the customers, and you don't want to worry about infrastructure. So this is one service that is really worth exploring. Let's take a closer look at LightSail, the newest addition to Compute. Now, this is one of those things which will give you a complete package. It starts at less than $5 a month. So let's create an instance. And right now I am in the Mumbai region and I can change my region. So let's put it in to Virginia. We can pick up our instance image. If I want only OS operating system, I can do that. If I want apps and OS, I can do that as well. So I'll keep it to WordPress. I want to make a WordPress website on my server. I can add any script that I want to fire at the bootstrap. I can also have the SSH keypad that I will use to log in from the console for LightSail. 
And then, uh, depending on how many resources I need, I can choose my instance plan. And it goes all the way from $5 a month to $80 a month if I'm running some really heavy duty application on it. But because I'm only running my WordPress website, I simply need the basic one. Then I am very good with 512 MB RAM, one CPU, and one terabyte of data transfer. Then I want to name my instance, and I'll keep it the way it is. And here I can change the quantity as well. If I click on it, then that's about it. That's about all I need to do to have my instance up and running. Right now, it is in a pending state. Now, this is something that is really good for the virtual private server. I don't have to worry about EC2 instance. I don't have to worry about security patches. I don't have to worry about the firewalls. It's all available to me in one small box. So all I do is come here, I click a few things, and my instance is up and ready. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.